we are not supposed to be those things. Yes, we are supposed to be forgiving and we are supposed to love one another. Though I know we live in an hour where the love that Jesus Christ is talking about has been perverted and twisted and redefined into what no longer means what Jesus means when he says that we ought to love our brothers as ourselves, that we ought to love our neighbors as ourself. As with many such things, do the false prophets and false apostles and the angels of light of this age twist and pervert the word of God. Oh, I could even talk about the evils of the world. I could talk about the great apostasy, the great falling away, which we look around and see on every side. The supposed church of God, the supposed house of God is backing off of her conviction. She's compromising. She's allowing Satan and the world to redefine what marriage is, redefine what it means to be a man, redefine what it means to be a woman, redefine what freedom is, redefine what sin is, redefine what grace is, redefine what faith is, redefine what salvation is, redefine who Jesus Christ is. I can talk about these things. I'm blue in the face and you know amongst other brothers and sisters we do talk about these things do we not we talk about the fear of the Lord we talk about the departure from true faith we talk about the the great deception that is occurring in the hour we're living in how severe it is how urgent it is we're in an hour like no other we're in an hour of great mental and emotional assault for the prince of the power of the air and all his fallen host is at war with those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It is written in Revelation 12, he's at war with those. He's not at war with the lukewarmites or the lukewarm Midians. He's not at war with the compromising church. He's not at war with the harlot. They're already prisoners. They've already been taken captive by their fleshly lusts, by the deceptions of this age, the deceitfulness of riches, the lust of other things. He's at war with those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And for those of us who are feeling this buffeting, this beating, the spirit of the Antichrist is trying to wear down the saints of God, and you might not like it, but he will. It's written. It is written. It's written in Daniel that when the power of the holy people is crushed, it is written, it is given to the Antichrist to make war with the saints, and it is given to him to overcome them. Is this a doom and gloom message? I don't believe so. I don't know what a doom and gloom message is. I hear this a lot. What is a doom and gloom message? You mean... A message where somebody's warning the church of God to get back on track. It's a doom and gloom message. Where somebody is standing up here saying, repent of your dead works. Repent of your dead faith. Put Christ first or you will lose your life. Is that a doom and gloom message? Well, you decide. That's the kind of message I need to hear. That's the kind of thing that keeps me on track. That's the kind of thing that keeps me on the straight and narrow, my friends. The fear of the Lord and the comfort of the Holy Spirit. How do you know when someone gives a prophecy or speaks a prophetic word or they're declaring things? How do you know you can believe what they're saying? Because it agrees with the word. It agrees with the word, my friends. And there's a lot of preaching a lot of teaching, a lot of prophecy being uttered that is not agreeing with the Word of God and it's not of God. But the church says, oh, it's God. Great deception, my friends. Great hour of deception we're living in. 